Name a condition that can cause deafness in your 20s. Hint, this is a really common board question. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 22-year-old female who came to my office complaining of hearing loss. I tricked you when I told you that she had otitis media as a child and did notice hearing loss in her left ear from that. That's a conductive hearing loss. What's the difference? Actually, they're quite different. Think of conductive hearing loss as like an obstruction or preventing sound to reaching the inner ear. And sensory neural hearing loss is basically damage to the inner ear so your brain can't interpret the sound. And there are some conditions with a little bit of overlap. We can easily tell the difference in this hearing loss by using something called a tuning fork. This is a 512 Hertz tuning fork and you can tap the fork, it'll make a sound and you can place this on the center of the patient's head and you want to ask the patient where they can hear the sound in one or both ears. That's called the Weber test. The Rene test is where you test air conduction and bone conduction. This is to test for conductive hearing loss where you tap the tuning fork and place it on the patient's mastoid. When they stop hearing it on the bone conduction side, you'll hold that tuning fork in front of their ear to see if they can hear it in the air. Normally you should hear air conduction longer than bone conduction. So if you can't, there's something obstructing the sound. I know it sounds really confusing, but basically in a sensory neural hearing loss, you can't hear the sound in the affected ear because the ear or the nerve is damaged. We got an MRI test in her case to see why the nerve may be damaged. Lo and behold, there are two tumors on this MRI one on each of her cochlear nerve with the left being larger than the right. She has bilateral acoustic neuromas. This is diagnostic of neurofibromatosis type two. It's a rare autosomal dominant disorder that can cause tumors of the central nervous system. And for those studying for boards, it is a mutation of the NF2 gene on chromosome 22 Q12. Acoustic neuromas, also known as vestibular schwannomas, are the hallmark lesion of this disease. It affects 95% of people with this disease and is almost always bilateral. This is a beautiful illustration by the Barrow Neurological Institute of what an acoustic neuroma looks like. Essentially, it's a benign tumor that grows on cranial nerve 8. Here you can see the cochlea of the inner ear and over here is the brain stem where cranial nerve 8 exits. An acoustic neuroma is a growth on this nerve. It grows inside of the nerve. Initially, it can cause no symptoms, and as the tumor grows larger, it can cause hearing loss. And if the tumor grows large enough, it can even cause compression of the brainstem and cause symptoms like dizziness, headaches, or balance troubles. This tumor over here is not quite that big. Depending on the patient's age, the size of the tumor, and their overall health, we determine what treatment for these tumors is needed. They're not malignant, so they don't necessarily need resection unless they're large and causing symptoms. Typically, these tumors are treated in one of three ways. One is surgical resection, two is radiation treatments to halt its growth, or three is just simply observing the growth of the tumor to ensure it doesn't get larger. One of the risks of surgical resection includes hearing loss completely in the affected ear and potential facial paralysis because cranial nerve seven lies directly beside that tumor. In our patient's case, the left-sided tumor was extremely large and she had already lost her hearing, so it needed to be resected. I referred her to a skilled skull-based neurosurgeon who performed a retrosigmoid craniotomy to remove the tumor. Basically, an incision is made behind the ear and we can get down to the brainstem to carefully pull the tumor off of the facial nerve. Her surgery was a complete success and she had no facial paralysis. Of course, she had already lost her hearing on the left side. Currently, we are just monitoring the other tumor while she heals from this surgery. But she has retained hearing in that ear. We don't wanna lose it. Virtually every patient with this disease will end up going deaf as they get older. Preservation of her hearing for as long as possible is of utmost priority. Other things that I want you to know about neurofibromatosis type two is that meningiomas and ependymomas are also common. Those are types of tumors in the brain and spine. I mentioned that it is autosomal dominant. In our patient, she was adopted, so we didn't know her family history. But we do know that she has a 50-50 chance of passing it on to any future children that she may have. It should be a high consideration as she is of childbearing age. Here's a table that explains how we can make the diagnosis of neurofibromatosis type two, and you can pause the video if you want to read the table. In our patient's case, the 
diagnosis of bilateral vestibular schwannomas sealed the deal. I hope you guys learned something from this video. It's another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll